Hey what's guys and welcome to another video on the channel Today's video is going to be a very really special one It is me sort of reacting or giving a, a, a detail about the Champions League 1 of 16 tie UEFA messed up big times um, But this video will probably go out just before the Wembley came out today But Originally, we got Benfica in the round of 16 draw, and now we get PSG. Yeah, not great. So, obviously, why that would be redone, the draw had to be redrawn, was... Um, the, uh, I think United were in the same pot as Villarreal, which they can't. They were playing the same group. Um, we were in the same group as Villarreal because, uh, for some reason, I don't know, but we can't as well because we're from the same country. And I believe they didn't put Atletico Madrid. To be able to play with United, which they can be, but they said no, you can't. So, yeah, they messed up big times. But let's talk about the draws from I think top to down because the down ones are exciting to say the least. Now let's talk about Salzburg Bayern first. Now I think this is one of those games here that I think is just you know literally too obvious. It's it's too obvious. That Bayern will go through the quarterfinals. I think they got a bit lucky. Um, Salzburg unfortunately got Bayern. I mean, it couldn't get worse. You go from getting Liverpool to Bayern Munich. It's a bit sad, isn't it? Um, but they've got some really good players, young talents. Of obviously, I I talked about it in another video. You guys can check it out here. Um, that Adeyemi is going back. Uh, not going back. Yeah, can get going back to Germany, but playing against a side who are apparently interested in him. They've got some good players like Oka for in there as well. So there are there are some really good players, but I don't think those young talented players can take on the side like Bayern and you know be like we're gonna go through. Um, I think they can definitely score goals, but no, nah, I think it's a bit too much of a reach for them to even consider themselves somewhat. Uh, able to go through so buy it there's a ticket to the quarterfinals basically now next up we've got sporting against Manchester City there's something with Manchester City getting the easy teams all the time they could have had Atletico they could have had Chelsea though they could have had Inter right yeah PSG no they can't so they, they could have had a couple of big teams but obviously the first time round they got Villarreal and then they got sporting now, I don't think it's going to be a tough draw for them. Sporting, yeah, Sporting, good team, Pedro Gonçalves, Pedro Porro, some really good players. Pedro Porro obviously returning to the club that he's current, his parent club, basically, he's out on loan from them. Um, they could be evil and recoin back in January just for him not to play against them. Imagine that. Um, and then obviously Pedro Gonçalves, they've got a really decent team overall. But I don't think that, I think if Man City play a B side, they will still be exporting. That is the quality. Maybe not necessarily a full B team, but if the likes of, I want to say De Bruyne is not here, I think one of the front lines, maybe Foden is not there, maybe Laporte, Diaz is not there, they will still go through. This is their depth. They've got so many good players in each position. No matter what, they will still have the, the like, amount of fit players. Right? They still have quality players as squad depth. And this is why I think Manchester City can go far. If they get an injury, they can, you know, be like, hmm, Diaz is injured. Let's bring in Stones, RK. No, if they've got options and qualities in those players, so obviously, um, Manchester City will probably go through there. Sporting, I think, can put out a, a fight, but I don't know, man. Like. I don't think so. And obviously we've got a few Portugal, Portuguese players sorry, got returning to Portugal. Bernardo Silva, Diaz, Joe Cancelo. So, it's a cool one. But overall, I think Manchester City will go through in that, like, that time. Now, the next one is probably one that is going to be an interesting fixture. But I don't think I'm going to be you know, necessarily focusing on this game. I know a lot of people will. But it's Benfica against Ajax. I think Ajax got a bit lucky, didn't they? Getting this draw. Obviously, there were limited teams. They couldn't get um, Sporting, who were in their group. They could only get teams who finished second. Um, there were teams that Chelsea they could have got. Um, so, yeah, and then. Can you get Inter? 
and they could have got injured, right? Yeah, so there were teams that they could have got that would be much tougher than Benfica. And again, Ajax, 6 win out of 6 in the group stages. Sebastian Allen, 10 goals in 6 games. Uh, they've got some really good players in there. If you look at the team experience, Ale, Tadic, young players, you know, that Graven Birch, Timber. That's a really solid team. They've got Anthony as well. So, there's, there's some really good quality players. And I think Benfica were one that they were a team that I wanted to play. And we did draw them, but because UEFA decided to F up everybody, um, here we are. But, um, let's not talk about that because, you know, he had to be redone. I, I don't totally agree with Real Madrid saying we want uh, our draw against Benfica was legal. I don't agree with that. Um, but I was just disappointed that we couldn't get Benfica. Um, but bring up PNG, we'll talk about that later on. Ajax, obviously, for me, favorite against a Benfica side who just about got through. They have, they have to tank Bayern Munich. They got to tank Bayern Munich. The side that helped them. Uh, if not, you'll be Barcelona there. Um, today, so we wouldn't be with no Benfica, it would have been Barcelona. So, for me, Ajax favorites for that game. Um, Benfica maybe can shock us a little bit. I think if there's a shock game, it would be Benfica being Ajax. I think you know, Ajax did really well in the group stages, but who knows? Maybe maybe they might fall off because I certainly don't think they can go all the way and win it. I don't think so. But who knows? Who knows? Maybe I said that we'll be here in a few months' time. They've won it for some reason, somehow. Who living knows? Next up, Chelsea Lil. As if they were going to get Lil again. As if. They could have had Bayern again. They could have had Real Madrid. They could have had. Where else could have had? Um, teams to finish first. So. Yeah. Uh, and. Uh, Ajax. So. And. They got. None of the. Ben Lil. The easiest of the four, in my opinion. I think if Chelsea had Bayern, Real Madrid, or Ajax, it would be a much tougher fight. But they've got Lille, obviously. And not just the Lille, sorry, but they've got good players, Johnson Davies in that team. But I don't see how they're going to be able to stop this Chelsea team. Yes, Chelsea have not been on the best form the last few games. They've considered many goals, obviously. I think they considered two against Leeds, three against Senate, and then two against West Ham. So that's like eight goals in three games considered. But I think if if Chelsea bring in like a top de defender like Kunde in, in January, hopefully not, they can definitely do well. Solid, solid. I I think they will stand no chance. In my opinion, they will stand absolute no chance against Chelsea. So personally, for me, Chelsea will go through that tie. Um, Lille obviously it's a bit harsh on them, but playing against a side who. Might have not done well in the past few games at the moment, but their form could go back up. You know, we've got until February, there's a month or so until the Champions League 1 of 16 starts, so who knows. Next up, Atletico Madrid, Manchester United. I think that is, there is two games that I will be keeping out, out, out on. And the um, the first game, obviously, PSG Real Madrid. And the next one is Atletico Manchester United. A very interesting game. The way Manchester United play under Rangnick, um, I think it's a 4 2 2 2 formation, weird formation. Can he get the system going before this, this game against Atletico? Or can he get the system going well? Because he needs to get it going well. If he doesn't, then I think Atletico Madrid will clear them. Now, I want Atletico Madrid out of this competition because I'm a Real Madrid fan, but genuinely, I don't like United either. I genuinely don't like Manchester United too. So. It would have been nice if both teams got knocked out, but only one team. Simeone side, aggressive, football, Vanek side, they do have Ronaldo, but is Ronaldo going to be the one who carries them to the quarters to save them against United, Manchester, uh, not Manchester, against Atletico Madrid? Yeah, I'm going to go Manchester United in this game. I don't think Atletico Madrid have the qualities that United have. In terms of qualities, Ronaldo, Fernandez, I know, I know these players that I named them, most of them haven't had a good start to the season so far, but when they do need to shine, I'm sure they could. Ronaldo, Sancho, Bruno Fernandez, th those are some players in that team. I mean, uh, there's only three. I mean, there's, there's more than I can think of, but Rashford, Mason Green with a youngster, there's more quality. Obviously, I think of Madrid, they've Luis Suarez, Joao Felix, and Correa. But in terms of uh, Lamar, but overall, I think Ronaldo can carry United all the way to at least the quarters. Not all the way to the final, 
But I think United will be probably edging Atletico in my opinion. I think it will be really tight. That game is one to watch, really. To see how these two sides come out against each other, especially with a new manager for United. Um, now, next up is one game that could be a surprise. Now, for me, Benfica beating Ajax was a surprise, but could very well beat Juve. We know Juve's recent form in the Champions League hasn't been good. They did finish top in their group this season, but they lost, was it, to Leon and Porto the last two seasons, was it in the round of 16 or quarterfinals in a row. Yeah, losing to Leon and Porto. I mean, Leon had a good run all the way until the semis, and then they got knocked by, I think, Bayern, I think, and then Bayern went and win it. Um, so, yeah, they played all three, though, against those two teams. Now, Villarreal, I think I would categorize as not necessarily the same category as Porto and Leon, but a little bit higher, but around, you know what I'm talking about. They are not the best in Europe. They're not the worst in Europe, definitely not. Um, but they are some in the mid category. So, could we see Villarreal shocking everybody and beating Juve? I genuinely think we can. And I will go with the underdog. I know Juve have, have a bit on form and Villarreal probably wouldn't want to be classified as the underdog. But firstly, Villarreal are in like 10th in the Liga. So, and you know what I mean. Um, and Juve's name, you know, they have their name. Juve are a big team, their name. I know they are not big in terms of their form at the moment, but they have name. They have superstars in their team. Dybala is the only one I can think of. Mm -mm. But still, I think Juve probably people expect to, to go through in that game, but for me, I think I will bet my money on Villarreal. Don't be surprised, they've got extremely really good defender. Or defense, sorry, not just defender. I was going to say Paul Torres, but their defense is really good. The midfield is strong. We, we know what they can do. And their attack, they can definitely score goals. So Juve, I think, have to watch out this. Juve have to watch out. Now, down to the next two games, um, also very interesting. But a game that I think is pretty much quite obvious who will go through. Inter against Liverpool. Now, don't is, no disrespect to Liverpool. But the fact that Inter didn't play that badly, but they lost to us. And I would say Liverpool are on better form and then Real Madrid not they have a better squad at least they're not on better form they have a better squad um they have a better squad than us you know they've got Salah up front they've got Van Dijk in the back they've got Alisson in goal so they've got some really good players and the fact that Inter couldn't handle us already is telling me that what makes you think they can handle it, Liverpool basically nothing I don't think they can handle Liverpool's attack Salah is going to be running riots in that team. Um, yeah, I just think that this is a bit obvious one. Inter, once again, you know, like, like Juve, a big name, you know, obviously. Inter Milan, one of the best clubs of, in, of all time, I guess. Or in the world, at least. Um, they're coming top of the Serie table, uh, which probably means they could probably, I think by one point, so they could probably put more focus in the Champions League. Um, but I think Liverpool are just going to run riots here. Salah is going to run riots. I'm going to tell you that Salah is going to score at least 3 goals over the 2 legs. At least 3 goals over 2 legs. I'm going to tell you right here. I'll be back in this video. And then if he doesn't score or if Inter knock Liverpool out, I'm telling you. I'll look like a clown. But obviously every every football journalist, pundit and everything, everyone is like Liverpool. So it's it's, it's fair to say Liverpool are favourites. Um, so yeah, I'm going with Liverpool. It's an interesting match, ma uh, match up, but I think that Atletico Madrid, Manchester United one is probably more close uh, or closer. Now, I think the most exciting draw of them all is PSG against Real Madrid. Not just because I support Real Madrid, but I think this game is huge. Firstly, Ramos, if he is fit to play, returns against his former side. The club that pretty much is is his his loved club. You know he's a legend here. He's a he's our former captain. I mean, he he's still our, not not still our captain. That, that he he obviously left, but he's still like in our hearts. You know what I mean? Like when a player like has been at your club for a long time, he served a lot, and then he just goes to another club and faces you. You know. And then they've also got players. Um, I don't think Hakimi is that relevant. Considering we don't, he hasn't really done that much for us. So 
Yeah, but still cool. He's coming back against a side that he once said was a dream return. He he hopes that he can return to Real Madrid. I know the PSG fans are gonna be like rubbish and nonsense, but the PSG fans just can't stand the truth. To be honest, Messi obviously against his arch rivals, his big rivals, and then obviously a few other players in there that are playing against their former sides like. Um, Kelo Navas, I don't think he's going to play, I think Donnarumma is clear. And Bappe as well against his future side. This game just has all, you know, the players returning or players playing each other is going to be big. Now, if you were to tell me a season or maybe even two seasons ago, who will win, I would say PSG. I would bet my money on PSG, bam, even without Messi um, in their team. Why? It's firstly because two seasons ago, yes, we had Ramos with Ryan still in the team. But two seasons ago, we did not have the Vini Jr. that we currently have. Our midfield wasn't that solid, I want to say, compared to this season. Our defense, we did not have Alaba. We had, obviously, Ramos and Varane. And then, I want to say Ramos and Varane were, uh, were definitely one of our best celebrate partnerships. But Sonia was just not taking between both Ramos and Varane. It felt like Varane was always helping Ramos in a sense where he was because obviously Ramos isn't the quickest defender he felt like it was almost Varane doing the defensive jobs and not like and that sounds a bit weird but you know Varane is a quick defender so he's normally covering up for Ramos so that's where I stand but now we have both Ayaba and Militao at the back I think we can do a solid job we don't need Militao to cover for Ayaba I know Ayaba probably wants to go a bit more forward but Alaba obviously can still do this well, quite well defensively. Um, and um, because I, I feel like Courtois as well has, you know, really, really turned up this season. I mean, maybe even last season as well. But before last season, I don't think he was um, who he currently is. You know, he's really making crucial saves to keep us in this competition, keep us in the Liga. So I feel like we've got a really good chance. If I was to put a bet, even as a neutral fan, I would go Real Madrid because of the balance. Even if, if, even if I wasn't a Real Madrid fan, I would be Real Madrid. Why? PSG, you know, they have no balance. Their front line is absolutely incredible. Their midfield, I'm sorry, atrocious. I mean, not atrocious, that's harsh, but not as good as ours. That defense, they still haven't found a balance defensively. If they can find that balance defensively, which I hope not, they can definitely win this leg or win across both legs. Um, but you know, Alaba Milita have been absolutely brilliant. It felt like we are doing much better defensively than them. So maybe, maybe. But those are my thoughts on the legs. I'm going with Bayern, Manchester City, Ajax, Chelsea. Manchester United, Villarreal, Liverpool, and Real Madrid. Might be a bit biased in some of those, but my god, I don't see some of the teams like Salzburg, Benfica, not, not maybe Benfica, but Salzburg, Sporting, and Inter for me is a clear goodbye. The rest of the games are gonna be interesting, and Leo as well. Goodbye, Leo as well. But be sure to watch out for Benfica Ajax, I think that will be a cool matchup. You know that. Uh, Obviously, against Atletico like Madrid, whatever you may, in, maybe Inter, P Inter Liverpool and PSG Real Madrid are some of the games that I will watch out for. Um, I believe um, Benfica Ajax and PSG Real Madrid are the first games on the 15th of that. I believe so. So we've got. Um, is it is it at, at, at exactly two weeks? Are we on the 15th when I'm recording this? Or is it the 16th? Maybe the 15th, you know, of December. So maybe two months, exactly two months, we have got PSG. But hey, I'll be back later on for the Real Madrid career mode. And then obviously, Real Madrid career mode stuff, that's all. And then this weekend, we play Cardiff. Um, and I'll make a review about that as well. Um, but yeah, that's gonna end of today's video. Hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. Hit the like button today, subscribe to the channel, it's on already. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace!